In chapter six, we talk about exponents and we graph um, exponential equations or functions as we talked about them in the last chapter. Um, but the first type of exponent that we're going to talk about is squaring because that's one that you're very used to. And the inverse of squaring is square rooting, which is the property that we're going to be looking at today. So these are uh, two properties that we talked about in our pre-6 video, the product property and the quotient property. So remember, the product property states that if you have two quantities being multiplied, such as the square root of x times y, you can break that up into the square root of x times the square root of y. And we, you did some examples in the pre-6 video. I'll just give you another one. If you have the square root of 45 you can break that up into the square root of 9 times 5, which is the square root of 9 times the square root of 5, which back in the pre-6 video, we said that's the same as 3 radical 5. So while it might not look simpler to you, it is. It's a reduced form of it. The quotient property is the same idea, only with division. If you have the square root of x over y, or a fraction, square root of a fraction, you can break that up into the square root of x over the square root of y. So an example might be if you have the square root of the fraction 3 fourths, you can break that up into the square root of 3 over the square root of 4. The square root of 4 is the number 2, so you just have the square root of 3 over 2. And that is a simplified version of the square root of 3 fourths. So since you did a little bit of practice in the pre-6 video, I'd like you to pause the video and try example one on your own, letters A and B. So hopefully you got them correct. Remember that you can only break down a square root if it has a perfect square inside of it as one of its factors, which is why we did not break down the square root of 15 because nothing from this list goes into 15. All right, when you're ready, let's check out example two. All right, in this example, we're just going to use the same uh, format, which in this case is the square root of b squared minus 4ac, which is something you will actually learn about in, I believe, chapter 9. Um, this is something special that we will talk about when we get there. Um, but right now we're going to use this radical formula and plug our values in for a, b, and c. So if you're comfortable, pause the video and give this a shot on your own. If not, let's do it together. So I'm just going to rewrite the formula, b squared minus 4ac, or the square root of, um, but wherever I see a, an a, a b, and a c, I'll put the numbers they give me. So I've got negative 8 squared. I'll put that in parentheses because um, negatives should always go in parentheses for order of operations. Minus 4 times 2 times 4. So let's just follow our order of operations. I've got the square root of exponents come first. So that's 64 minus 4 times 2 times 4. And now let's do uh, multiplication. 64 minus 4 times 2 is 8. 8 times 4 is 32. So that is the square root of 32. And 32 can be broken down um, into the square root of, well, that square root sign is bothering me. Um, it can be broken down into the square root of 16 times the square root of 2. The reason that I picked 16 is because the square root of 16 is 4, so the answer is 4 radical 2. Let's try letter B. Big square root, negative 6 squared minus 4 times 2 times negative 5. Order of operations. Let's do exponents first. That's 36 minus 4 times 2 times negative 5. Big square root, 36 minus 4 times 2 is 8. 8 times negative 5 is negative 40, so that turns to plus 40, 
and that's the square root of 76. So I'm gonna pause for a second and think uh, one, four, four goes in, um, but does something bigger go in? I don't think so, I'll give it a shot. Let's see, hopefully four is the biggest one that goes in. So that's the square root of four times the square root of 19. Yeah, that doesn't reduce at all. So I definitely did get the biggest and the square root of four, I picked it because the square root of four is two. So the answer is the two times the square root of 19. All right, this one's a little more involved, but we're gonna take it one step at a time. The first thing that we wanna do is we want to reduce the square root of eight. You should always reduce the square root if you can. So the square root of eight reduces to the square root of four times the square root of two, which is two square root of two. So I'm going to rewrite the original question, but instead of square root of eight, I'll write two square root of two. Now, you might not really know what to do from there. You might feel like there's something you could do, um, but you're not really sure what you could do. And I want you to think of this right now as back in um, chapter two, I believe it was, when we first started graphing, we had equations that looked, let's say, um, like 2y equals 6x plus 4. And many of you wanted to write it like this, y equals 6x plus 4, all divided by 2, and I said that's great, that's equivalent, that's fine, but for slope and intercept that wasn't very helpful, so what I encourage many of you to do was to rewrite it as 6x over 2 plus 4 over 2, and then you could reduce and get 3x plus 2. So what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to rewrite this right here as I encourage you to write it over here. So I want you to write six over two plus two radical two over two. So just take it and split it up just like you did here. Now, six over two is three. And then remember I taught you in the um, pre six video that even though these radicals are not variables, you can treat them like you would variables. So how would you reduce two X over two? If you had two X over two, hopefully you would say that's, you could reduce the twos and just say two divided by two is one X or just X. So these are the same thing. Remember, the radicals are not variables, but they but you can think of them performing operations similar to that. So two divided by two is one, so you just get three plus one square root of two, or you can just write three plus radical two. Since three does not have a radical sign, you cannot combine these. It's just like three plus x, you would just leave it because variables and numbers cannot be combined. Radicals and integers cannot be combined either. All right, so this slide or this example has some bizarre box. So we, I'm not really sure what this is about, but somehow when I transfer on the computer, it has this big box. I'll get over it. <laughs> And hopefully you will too. But anyway, so back to the question. Um, we want to do the same kind of thing, split it up. But before we split it up, we first have to reduce the square root of 27. So that's the square root of 9 times the square root of 3. And the square root of 9 is the number 3. So I'm going to rewrite the question. But wherever I see a square root of 27, I will write 3 square root of 3. Now let's split it up. Negative one over four minus three, radical three over four. That actually doesn't really do much of anything. Nothing simplifies, nothing reduces, right? Three divided by three does it, three divided by four doesn't simplify, one divided by four doesn't simplify. So actually either one of these is an okay answer. You could leave it like this because nothing reduces but it is necessary to reduce this to three square root of three.
All right, pause the video, try this practice section on your own, and hopefully uh, you get all the answers correct when I put them up after you are ready. All right, these are your first two examples. One thing I want to point out is that I chose to make this negative sign say negative 1 radical 80. That way, once I had the 4 here, it reminded me to multiply by negative 1. So you're more than welcome to do that because you have to multiply your coefficients when you are at that point. And now let's look at the crazy number 3 and a little tricky number 4. Um, let's look at number three. When I got to this point, I could have um, split it up using the quotient property, but what I decided to do, because I it, 232 looked very complex, and it, then I tried to do it and it got very complicated, um, was that I actually did the division, and then I had a simpler number to break up. I had 116 to break up instead of the quotient property because um, 2 doesn't have any friendly perfect squares inside of it. So you can do that, and really, kids ask me, how do you know what when to do it? And I say, you do whatever you need to do to get, the, to get it simplified. So if using the quotient property would have been quicker, I would have used the quotient property. If dividing helped me get it quicker, then I would divide. It's really up to you and whatever you feel comfortable doing and whatever helps you reduce. If one method isn't working, try a different method. So then I got 2 squared of 29, and when I brought it back down, I had this number in front, this coefficient, kind of like I had over here with the negative 1. So I treated it the same way, just like I did. I had the 4, and then I multiplied it by the negative 1. So I had 2, and then I multiplied it by the 2 pi. So I got 4 pi radical 29. And over here in number 4, first thing I had to do was simplify square root of 80, and then I brought it back into the question. I split it up so I could divide. And then you can either leave it like this, or you can leave it together. If you're going to leave it together, though, you have to make sure it's reduced. Sometimes people who leave it together forget to reduce, um, but you can leave it separate or together. It doesn't matter. If you have any questions, write them down and ask me when you see me in class.